Krishna, Krishna. Namang Vishnu Padaya.
कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरत्से नम गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय नमो नम यं प्रव्रजतमुपेतमेतृत्यम 
द्वैपायनो भीरहकातर याजुहाव पुत्रे तन्मय तया तर्व भिने तर्वभूतहृदय तवैवास्मे तवैवास्मे न जीवा तया विना विज्ञराधे तंगचरण भक्तियानायराधलक्षिप्ताश कामतरंग मध्य कृपाई तां शरण प्रपन्ना वृंदे नुमस्ते चरण फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल माय हार्ट टचिंग ओपिशियंसस इन द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर नित्यलीला प्रविष्ट ओं विष्णुपाद श्रीश्रीमद भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोस्वामी महाराज एंड सेम इन द लोट फीट ऑफ माय शिक्षा गुरु ओं विष्णुपाद श्रीश्रीमद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज I want to remind you that what is bhakti, and you should judge by your heart that whether you are heartily following the principles of bhakti or not. So, you know, in Shrimad Bhagwat, definition of bhakti has been given. In other, also in his scriptures, it has been given. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu associate Sri Rup Goswami has given the definition of bhakti, which. contains all the previous definitions and that is anna bhilashita shunyam gyan karmat dana vritam anukullena krishna anushilanam bhakti uttam i have told so many times but still i am today reminding you what is bhakti Arun Maharaj should explain in brief. Puma gana timarandha sa gana andana salakya o chakshur anvale tamje na chasvai sri gurave nama. So Shri Gurudev ordered me to speak briefly about the unprecedented definition of bhakti that was written down by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu under the direct inspiration of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and written down by Rupa Goswami Pad. Anya bilasita shunyam, jnana kama dena bhritam, anukulye na Krishna nushyam bhakti uttama. The unbroken uninterrupted cultivation of all endeavors of one's body mind and words and also of sentiments of the heart which are meant exclusively for the benefit of shri krishna which are completely devoid of the slightest trace of any other desire and which are not covered by karma the tendency to perform reward seeking activity gyan the cultivation of knowledge for the purpose of attaining liberation and yoga the cultivation of mystic power dry renunciation etc such a constant unbroken cultivation of all endeavors of the body mind and words is called uttama bhakti yes yes ah. some explanation Hare Krishna there is a speaker in the prasadam hall 
for all the children who want to compete with the lecture? What? What? <laughs> so, Srila Gurudev ordered me to give little explanation. So far, we have explained the translation only. Now, a brief explanation. The verse can be divided into two parts. Anyabilashtashunyam jnana kamat dinavritam. And then the second part. Krishna anushilam bhakti. Anukul yena Krishna anushilam bhakti uttama. The first part defines the tatasta lakshan of bhakti. That means the extrinsic characteristics of devotion. It explains what devotion isn't. Whereas the second part defines the Swarup Lakshan, the intrinsic characteristics of devotion, that defines what devotion actually is. So, first we'll look at that. Anukul Yena Krishna Anushilanam. The entire verse re re revolves around the word Shilanam. Shil Datu means a cultivation. So, Bhakti is not something static. It is not the, a gya, like Gyan, knowledge, but it's Kriyatmic, it's an activity. And so, the shield hatu, this verb, refers to uh, cheshtarup, the endeavors that one performs, and also bhavarup, or the concomitant emotions which accompany those endeavors. So, when we examine the cheshtarup aspect of shilanam, we find that it has two parts, that is called the um, nivriti, nivriti Atma Chesta Rupa and Pravriti Atma Chesta chest, Rupa. Nivriti Atma Chesta Rupa means that in Bhakti we'll have to be very careful and make a conscious, energetic endeavor to avoid those things which are not favorable for devotion, such as Atyahara Priyasas Cha Prajalpo Niya Magraha Janasangas Talolyam Cha Sadbi Bhakti Venashati. Overeating, over-endeavoring, speaking mundane things, uh, being greedy for worldly achievements and association of materialistic persons. Also, we have to be very careful to avoid things such as Nam Aparad, being inattentive at the time of chanting, and uh, ten other types of Nam Aparad, including Vaishnava Aparad, making offenses to other devotees, and Guru Avagya, uh, neglecting or disrespecting the spiritual master. All of these things... Uh, because actually the three modes of material nature, they, by force they engage us in these things and therefore we have to make concerted energetic effort to avoid them. Mm? So that is called Nivriti Atmaka Chesta Rupa, the endeavor to give up those things that, which will be detrimental for our devotion. Then Pravriti Atmaka Chesta Rupa means to accept everything which is favorable. So that means Utsahan Nistyat Dariyat Tata Karma Pravatanat um, to always be enthusiastic, to be, um, conf have confidence, faith in the words of Guru, Sadhu and Shastra and to have patience if it takes some time and the result is not coming at once to not lose our enthusiasm and confidence even though some time is elapsing, this is called patience, etc. So these are the qualities whereby Bhakti becomes successful. These will have to be accepted. So these two aspects are part of Cheshtarup called Sadhanrup and then the other aspect of Cheshtarup or endeavor is called Karyarup. When, when one sadhan has become advanced up to the stage of Bhav, then all the activities such as Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, they're undertaken not as Indriya Vyapar or Indriya Prerana, activities instigated from the level of the senses, but rather hearing, chanting and remembering is taken up as a reaction to one's internal transcendental feelings, one's spont spontaneous love for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Radha Krishna. So this is called the Karya Rup. Then if we go to the Bhava Rup aspect of the word Shilanam, there are um, two parts. One is called Stai Bhava Rup, and one is called Sanchari Bharup. The Staibhav Rup refers to the uh, emotions that one feels which are the foundational ecstatic mood of love for Sri Krishna. It's of five types, Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Madhurya. Neutral, a passive adoration and superior to that the mood of a servant, superior to that the mood of a friend, 
superior to that, the mood of a parent, and the supermost emotion, the mood of a beloved of Sri Krishna. So this is called the Stai Bhav Roop. Within the ocean of the Stai Bhav, one's foundational ecstasy, some transitory assisting emotions like waves will rise and fall. That is called Sanchari Bhav Roop. There are 33 types of Sanchari Bhavs. So all revolving around the word Shilanam, is uh, the entire explanation of bhakti for those in the stage of sadhan, in the stage of bhav, and also in the stage of prem. So Rupa Goswami Pada has written, Krishna Anu Shilanam, that this cultivation of endeavors should be not Shilanam, only a cultivation of endeavor, but rather Anu Shilanam. The word Anu indicates continuous, unbroken. So we can see to what degree we have progressed in pure bhakti by how much our mm, absorption in devotional service is interrupted by things other than devotional service. And when the, our practices are uninterrupted, then it can be called Anu Shilanam. The word Anu, apart from indicating Nirantar Jamai, continuousness, also indicates Anugatya. That Bhakti is an activity which is performed under the guidance of the one's superiors. Whether it's in this world, the conditioned souls in this world must take up devotional service, not independently, but under the guidance of a liberated spiritual master. If they're not under the guidance of a, a liberated spiritual master, their activities, though they may be performing hearing and chanting, remembering, they cannot be called uh, Uttama Bhakti. They cannot fit into the definition given by Rupa Goswami Pad. So in this world, and also out of this world, in the eternal spiritual world, there we see that mm, all the Rati Manjari is under the guidance of Rupa Manjari, is under the guidance of Lalita Sakhi, who is under the guidance of Radhika, and all are serving Krishna. And therefore, the principle of Anugatya, or being under guidance, is universal and all-pervading in the spiritual world, and it extends down to this world, so we'd better get used to it here. <laughs> then, Anu Koyena Krishna Anu Shilanam. Uh, the word Anu, Krishna Anu, also indicates that devotional service is in connection with Krishna. So it may be uh, directly for Krishna or for a person who is related to Krishna. So because the, the conditioned soul in this world it has not realized his relationship with Krishna, his devotional activities only become devotional when he performs them for the pleasure of a devotee who actually is established in a relationship with Krishna. So Srila Nartam Das Thakur said, Shri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma. That the repository of devotional service, uh, there is an exclusive repository of devotional service. It is not available anywhere else. It is only available at the lotus feet of one's divine holy teacher, the spiritual master, Sri Guru. So we come to the word Anukulyena. Anukulyena is sometimes taken to mean for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. But actually we find that this conception is a mistranslation, is not complete. Why? Because in the past times of Krishna, we see that Madhya Shoda, sometimes she binds him with a rope. Sometimes she may just twist his ear and she may give him, inflict some discipline upon him, which at the moment, at that time, for Krishna is something that he doesn't want. It's not something that's very pleasing to him. He, Krishna may weep and cry and have a tantrum or become, do some more uh, mischief in order to avenge the uh, discipline inflicted upon him by his mother. So we see that with the question comes, is the discipline inflicted by Mother Yashoda, is it bhakti or not? It must be, uh, even though it's not immediately pleasing to Krishna. So the word uh, anukulyena means pratikul bhav rohita. Devotional service is devoid of any antagonistic mood towards Krishna. On the other hand, we see that Chanura and Mustika, the wrestlers of Kangsa, they were fighting with Krishna, they were trying to kill him, and Krishna was really relishing that fight. Mm? It gave great pleasure to him. Yet the activities of Chanura and Mustika, the wrestlers, though it gave pleasure to Krishna, it can't be called bhakti because it was not anukulyena, meaning pratikul bhavroita. It was not devoid of antagonism, but rather it was completely infused with antagonism. They wanted to kill Krishna. So if we take the word anukulyena to mean for the pleasure of Krishna, then there would have been a defect in the definition of Rupa Goswami. 
One defect, that defect would have been avyapti um, dosh. In other words, the definition is uh, too narrow and di excludes things which are included in bhakti, such as the services of Madhya Shoda. Or it would have been ha be guilty of ativyapti dosh, the definition being too broad and including things which are not actually devotion, such as the, um, uh, the beatings of the powerful rest restless Chanura and Mustika. So when bhakti is performed by body, mind and words and feelings of the heart, devoid of any ad antagonistic mood, continuously under guidance uh, for the benefit, ultimate benefit and welfare of Krishna, this is called bhakti uttama. The word uttama means that this bhakti is uttama, above darkness. It's above the material world of the uh, prakriti, the modes of material nature. So the word uttama bhakti indicates that there must be things, there must be a type of bhakti which is not uttama. So th that is when uh, bhakti is not uttama, that means the devotional activities are uh, mixed with the modes of material nature. So that is called uh, arop siddha bhakti, sangha siddha bhakti, and the, that's Thank what... You. No need. So, in this way, on Gurudev's order, we conclude this brief discussion of the nature of Uttama Bhakti. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You heard about this. Now you can judge yourself. Truly, you are following this Bhakti or not. You know, Dhruva, He did bhakti. He meditated Narayan, Vaibhav Prakash of Krishna. And he shock, he took darshan even. But his bhakti is not pure. Because he has some anya vilas. And he has some worldly desire also. Some attachment to her mother, his mother. So not pure bhakti. In regard, we see Prahlad Maharaj. His bhakti is pure. Bhisham Pitama, pure bhakti. Sanak Sanandan Sanatan in first stage, pure bhakti. But not Uttama bhakti. No. Not. Prahlad Maharaj is Bhagavat, Uttam Bhagavat. Uh, for Vaidhi Bhakti, we take him. We must follow him. But for Raganuga, oh, giving regard them, him, Prahlad, Bhisham Pitama, four Kumars, even Sukhdev Goswami in his first, first career, you will give respect to them. But keeping them aside, you should go forward. Then Uttama Bhakti will be, otherwise not. One thing also, <coughs> Anu Kullena, he told so many explanations. Anu Nairam Tarjimai. Anu Anugatya Mai. What is the meaning of Anugatya? Can you say? What is the? What is that? Anugatya means to be completely under the guidance of the uh, spiritual master or one's uh, guide. Uh, also related to Sharnagati, that one is, has completely surrendered, one has passed the stage of Nishtan, is entering into the stage of Ruchi, taste for chanting. So this would indicate that one is coming Has under, any under disciple God. right to correct his Gurudev words? Understand? To cor correct, to correct his words. Correct his explanation correct his words, correct his writings, 
correct anything has the right or not i think it would depend on the circumstances huh? <laughs> i think it would depend upon the circumstances no never in any case anukul lena if anything that you are not understanding you can ask him clarify in what line oh if i am qualified then you may tell not more than that any disciple if he thinks that i am more superior more, i can think more i know better than my guru dev then he is demon really he is demon hmm? before accepting guru he can think that whether he is qualified or not first at that time and if he has accepted then he should obey he has no right to change anything of a good words then where is anukul lena hmm? you know vyas uh, deva ji narayan shakta avesh avatar no and guru was who nargrishi he totally followed why i am sad he did not knew oh gurudev you know why i am sad nargrishi did not wrote so many scriptures scriptures and other things Thus, there were as divided four Vedas, made Brahma Sutra, Mahabharat, and so many, so many things more than Narad. Narad has done only Narad Pancharatra. But oh, what his Guru Dev told, it was all right, not to change. He had no authority to do. so we should try to follow guru dev in this line if any doubt comes you can go directly and begging very politely you should ask and he will remove your all doubts always be careful otherwise this is nama prad second guru ravagya always we sometimes misguided but our shastra tells all these things clearly what is written anna abhilashita sunnam gyan karmadyan nabutam anukullena krishna anushilanam bhakti or it should be applied also on guru on guru it has been told krishna and his uh, no no krishna and his manifestations also gurudev it should be applied so we should try to understand all these meanings and follow i have come only to remind you all don't be weak and try to follow all these things and we should begin from beginning आदौ श्रद्धा तत साधु संग आई टोल्ड यू आई थिंक आई थॉट इन मलेशिया आई टोल्ड द व्हाट सब्जेक्ट शुड आई डील हियर देन आई माई सेल्फ डिसाइडेड दैट इन जगन्नाथपुरी वी हैव एक्सप्लेन सम व्हाट अबाउट रायरमानंद संवाद इन राम रायरमानंद संवाद नथिंग इज लेफ्ट फ्रॉम वेरी बिगिनिंग यू कैनट थिंक वेरी बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम वर्णाश्रम धर्म एंड व्हाट अप टू राधा मूड मंजरी मूड व्हाट आई टोल्ड इन मॉर्निंग एवरीथिंग इज डिस्कस देयर and how to have the process also 
So, I thought that in brief, we will discuss here how many? Four days or five days? Four. Four more days. I will try that we should discuss briefly on this subject. So you should also be prepared. So, <coughs> Mahaprabhu went to south. There were so many purposes. Outwardly purpose was to know about whereabout of his brother. Vishwaru huh? Prabhu. What became? And he went there, discovered that he has left his body, this world. He met with Raya Ramananda. And everywhere in South, he made all boys know by preaching. Told them, be guru. And preach what I told you. You should tell Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. And tell him or to preach that. But one condition. And condition was. Don't meet, take meat, eggs, wine, all these things. And you should chant and be Guru. Someone questioned. Then Guru Abhiman will come. Oh, it will not come. You should be sincere. So we should try to follow. He went to various temples. He went to Shetmanda Rameshram, Kanya, Kanya Kumari. Kanya Kumari means Durga. No? Shet Mandarameshwaram, Tanjor, here and the same Shiv temple everywhere. But everywhere he was dancing. Hmm? Dancing. And all were dancing with him. And he was singing also. Why? Why he was singing and dancing? In Tanjor, Shiv temple, 1,008 Shiva Vigraha. Very biggest temple. Even more higher than Puri temple. And there is a biggest stone. More than oh, how, thousand tons perhaps. And how they kept there? No one knows. And he went there and began to dance and sing. Why? Anywhere he used to go, he did not saw their fo form or anything. What? What he saw? Everywhere Krishna is Purti. Hmm? What is written? Thaur jangam dekhe, nakhe dekhe tar murti. Sarvast surai tahar iste devar surai. Sarvatra. How? He saw Shiva, Mahadev. And Mahadev always serving Krishna like Atma Bhav. Hari Har Ek Atma. Like Gopishwar Mahadev. And he began to to meditate on Krishna. Thus. A Uttamadikari sees grasses. But not grasses. What? Who made it? Who made it? And at once goes to Krishna. So everything reminds him. Krishna, Krishna. And if more Uttamadikari then he will think that, oh, all reminding Radhika. 
he will see Krishna and what? Remember, she is controlled by Radhika. Her love and affection is so high. So, Uttamadhikari sees her. So, everywhere he went, preached her name. Eh? And all were inspired by them. They became Vaishnav. Thus, he came to Raharamanand place, Godavari. Now, what place? Vijayavada Rajmundri, Kabur, where Raharamanand used to be, Kabur. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sitting. He had taken bath and he was meditating something. How beautiful was he? Was himself so beautiful. Taking the beauty, intrinsic beauty of Radhika. So how beautiful he is. And what meditating? For which he had descended. And saffron cloth matches. Why took saffron cloth? And rock collar. And then, in the meantime, king with drum, with thousands of pandit reciting Veda Shlok. Oh, Sri Sukta, Purushakta, and all other shlokas. And then he took bath also. And then for di from distance he saw. Who is that? Sannyasi. Thinking, he stop all the Brahmins there, you should wait here. And his palanquilo, palanquin, or oh, he stopped there. Alone, with only dhoti, only one, it, and up covering. In a simple way, without shoes and palatial dresses, he came. And he went to Mahaprabhu and thinking like this. Mahaprabhu opened his eyes and saw. The two eyes, two eyes became four. <laughs> and that Mahaprabhu asked, Are you Ramananda? And then what? Oh, I am Sudra. I am Sam Sudra. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at once embraced him. And he wanted to fall on the feet of Mahaprabhu. All the Brahmins from distance, they were watching. What doing they? This sannyasi is Brahmin. Because without Brahman being by burn, but anyone cannot take sannyas. But our Goswami has opened the door for all. Otherwise, he should take birth in India and also in very high class of Brahmin family. Then he will. So he must be Brahmin and he is sannyasi even. Why he is touching this sudra? Raramananda sudra. Sudra Raj Bhavate Achya Sudri Udri Kaistake Sudri Bodhu. He was in Kaist family. Kaist is called Sudra. Because there are so many regions. Anyhow, he told himself that I am Sudra. And all they thought, 
that he is sudra so they were thinking why this sanyasi being a brahman sanyasi and what light coming from his effulgence coming from his body body so high class and why he touching this sudra ramananda and ramananda is very learned person very grave he is like a king representative governor general of pratap rudra and very learned a square why he is now dancing and weeping and trembling asasattik bikar they could not understand that why this but actually rayaramanand is not sudra who is sudra lamenting for mortal things they are sudra if a sanyasi lamenting for his mother father for position for anything mortal thing then sanyasi is not really a sanyasi he is sudra and even a sudra like vidur sudrani mata narad in his first but but he was from sudrani mata mother but if he will think that they were sudra then it is nama aparad vishnu aparad we should not think like this so raya ramananda was guru of sanyasi even more than sanyasi mahaprabhu respected him chaitanya mahaprabhu told him that oh i was in jagannath puri and sarbham bhattacharya was very kind to me he told me that if you are going to south you must meet rayaramanand he the last sima limit of prem bhakti at first i could not understand but by the association of mahaprabhu he recognized who is rayar now he is appreciating and told that you must go there and see so i have come to you and i want that i want to hear something from you rayaraman told oh in a form of sanyasi really you are not sanyasi sarbham bhattacharya was very kind to me and perhaps that is why he has sent you to me i want that you should stay here for some more day and try to correct me or inform me so thus at that day up to this mahaprabhu told that in evening i will wait for you you must come and thus mahaprabhu went to a brahmin who invited him to take mahaprasadam and mahaprabhu went there took prasadam and evening he was waiting gaur premanand hari bol one kirtan krishna das i want that you should all present here at 5 then 2 hours we can discuss all these things and you should make make program for morning classes ha huh. everything hmm. hari hari krishna <coughs> ए घोर संसारे परिया मान 
এমন গড যাতে সবগুলি ধরে কাজ সহজ কীর্তন গোরা পহনা ভিয়ামইন প্রেম রতন ধন পহ পহনা ভিয়া মৈন গোরা সতত খাইন 